Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Yep, so I'm moving to a new style of video, uh, which are the videos I like to watch, which are by people like Phil, Madrona Woodworks, um, Afshim, Crafts with Afshim, stuff like that where uh, there's no music and we talk about what we're doing. So uh, bear with me, it's my first time doing that. So what I'm doing today is I have just got back from Spain visiting a friend of mine, Guzman, in Madrid and he had a house in the countryside in a little village called Candelario and while we were over there I said I'd like to make some kind of woodworking project uh, based on his house in the country roughly based on um, so we went out with an axe and uh, into the countryside and um, found a bit of dead wood and uh, spent a couple of hours chopping up some bits uh, brought them back to the UK in my hand luggage which was fun wrapped up in bubble wrap and plastic um, so yeah it's I'm, I'm pretty sure it's pine I'm using got some pine cones as well and we're gonna make a bowl that um, is a tribute to the place we were staying in basically so here uh, what I've got is a couple of I've got a 30 centimeter plastic bowl um, and a 20 centimeter plastic bowl and I'm cutting up pieces of wood to then set into epoxy with um, some different pigments So yeah, you saw the Ford 1000 series tractor with the big saw bench on the back. Uh, just doing the grunt work and now I'm on the uh, table saw. Just chopping this into rough sections. I had an idea that I was going to cut them into intricate sort of sections and place them in some, co some sort of pattern in the bowl. But um, actually what I've decided to do is just uh, cut them into blocks, chuck them in randomly and um, we'll see what comes out when I start turning it on the other end. So this is just part one of the video. I'm only going to pour the epoxy today, but this is just the, the, the you know the groundwork for this for this project. So yeah, there's the 30 centimeter bowl. There's the pine cones. probably done far too much wood than I actually need brought back some lovely wine with me while I was over there So yeah, I'm just layering it up. Wood on the bottom, pine cone in the middle. Apologies for the camera angle. I do sort it out in a minute. I'd like to say a big thanks to Rod Humphreys for featuring my work on his latest YouTube video. And thanks to all the subscribers that have come over from his channel. And to all my subscribers, sorry for not posting any videos in the last few weeks. I've actually been making a lot of clocks. Um, but they were kind of time sensitive, so I didn't record any videos of those. I have improved my technique from the older videos. Hopefully this, this video will show uh, what I've been able to learn in the last few weeks. There we go, that's a better camera angle. So you've got the 20 centimeter bowl in the middle. Uh, just so I don't waste resin really so as you can see I'm not really putting them in in any order or any pattern um, I think when it's turned you should just get a nice natural cross section of everything that's in there I'm doing it thick as well it's probably about an inch and a half thickness all round 
I'm hoping to turn that down to about mm, three quarters of an inch probably would be good. So yeah, fairly happy with that. Doesn't have to be too accurate at this point. Ah, there, there we go. There's a lovely Spanish wine. Two euros fifty a bottle. It's about two pound, maybe uh, two and a half dollars, something like that. I'm using glass cast fifty resin. First time using that resin, so uh, don't really know how it's going to turn out. I've had a lot of success using the um, resin for art resin that Nick Zametti uses on his videos. But um, this is slightly cheaper if you buy it in bulk, so I've decided to go with this. There's two to one ratio if you're doing it by volume, so there's 300 mil of B and 600 mil of A going into that measuring cup. Hopefully that thing is accurate enough so that I don't get any problems with the resin cure. Doing my best to make it accurate there. You really do have to be quite accurate with the uh, measurements and the mixing. With epoxy I've discovered over the last sort of nine months. Had a few disasters along the way. So here I am <laughs> trying to mix it by hand and I thought no this is not going to work I'll be there for about 20 minutes half an hour probably mixing that if I was doing it properly so I decided to uh, nip to the workshop get a drill and put one of my spatulas on the end of a screw Yeah, in an effort to make it uh, adequately mixed Yeah, that's better. Doing it with this method does put a lot of air into the resin, unfortunately, which makes it kind of cloudy. Um, that air has since risen to the top. Um, but yeah, I'm not too worried about the bubbles on the top at this moment in time, because I'm going to turn them away. I do think it's worth spending more time than you would think you'd need mixing resin, because um, if you get it wrong, there's probably about um, 60 pound, 70 dollars worth of resin in this bowl alone. So getting it wrong really isn't an option. I don't have enough resin to make another one. And at this point I was quite concerned about the cloudiness, but um, I think it's down to air. So we've got some amber dye. I thought I would go for a sort of translucent amber colour. I'm sure, as many of you know, when you start doing this kind of thing, uh, you just keep putting more and more dye in until it looks like the colour you would imagine. Um, I've got some alumnite black dye, which is very, very strong. And here I'm just putting one dot in, and you'll see what it does to the colour. <laughs> so the uh, lovely amber colour has disappeared, and we've we've ended up with a cloudy black resin. But again, the cloudiness is just bubbles, I think, just lots of lots and lots of bubbles. That's a bit of red alcohol dye, just to see if it made any difference. And uh, that black is, is so strong, actually, it made no difference at all, really. So we're going to do the first pour. Not the easiest stuff to pour into a bowl like that, to be honest. Since it's got epoxy all over my table.
you might notice as well, the inner bowl actually has a recess on the bottom, which means that all the bubbles that came up from that bottom are now trapped under that surface. Luckily, I've made it thick enough uh, so that I can turn those bubbles away when we finish. Now I've gone to my A and B cups. Probably should have done that from the start. I can accurately measure 300 and 600. So yeah, didn't get a lot of amber from that last one, so I thought, right, really going to go for it with this one, try and make an amber colour. And you do have to scrape these containers because that glass cast 50, unlike my other resin, is uh, it's really quite thick. Uh, and if I didn't scrape the, uh, the tub like I'm doing now, my quantities would be out probably only by 10 or 20, 30 mil maybe, but that's it might be enough to mess up the um, curing process. Yeah, pretty happy with that colour. I've also got three different types of gold glitter, two, two of which are holographic. Um, we'll see when it comes out how much of that you can actually see. Yeah, my idea when doing this bowl was to try and do a graduated fade. Sort of black at the bottom, orange in the middle, and then a more red colour at the top. Uh, but as it is, resin being what it is, it likes to blend with itself. So at this point it was quite dark. You can see the bubbles forming on the bottom of the inner bowl there. I say I'm not too worried about those. I've got the thickness there. I've probably got um, at least an inch and a half on the bottom. I'm hoping to turn this down to 20 mil. So hopefully all of those bubbles will be uh, gone. Mm. This wine is quite Moorish. Luckily I bought four bottles of it back from Spain. Not sure how long they'll last. So we're going for pour number three. Again, 300 mil of B, 600 mil of A, which in total is 2.7 litres of resin going into this. Uh, I bought these uh, glass cast resin um, I got a 5 litre kit and that was £91 including delivery. So there's probably £50, £60 pounds worth of resin in this bowl so if it doesn't work out I'll have to rethink what I'm doing here but um, time will tell us uh, as to what happens. So this top layer I decided to make it uh, quite red. Again, trying to go for a graduated fade. Um, but as you'll see in a couple of seconds, the um, the finished product is <laughs> more red than amber, I think, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. I think it'll look just fine. Afshim did say that he uh, put all his wood in the microwave to avoid bubbles coming out of the wood. Um, I probably should have done that and uh, if I have not taken your advice and it turns out rubbish then uh, I'm the idiot, right? So uh, 
we'll, we'll have to see what the finished product looks like. Those glitters, incidentally, come off eBay. I think they're about 99p a packet. They're uh, very good. I, I think I've got 10 or 12 packs of them, all different colours, holographics and stuff. So yeah, I wanted to leave this bowl when finished, about an inch from the top, because that should give me about 11 and 3 quarter inches total diameter. Um, my lathe can handle uh, about 12 inches between centres. <clears throat> we'll see how it comes out. Right, so thank you everybody for watching this video. That was part one. I've now got to wait probably 48 hours for the resin to cure properly. Uh, and then we'll uh, crack it out, put it on the lathe, and get ready for part two. So thanks to all my subscribers for sticking with me. I uh, hope to bring you a lot more videos very shortly. So thanks very much. Bye-bye.